Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lure Painting Live. I'm Krista. I am the painter behind Colorado Custom Lures. And I am here to paint for you. So we're going to do a swim bait again because uh, apparently it is time to have swim baits painted all around the world today. Or I guess I should say lately. So we're going to do a swim bait. So I um, have posted a discount code that's good until tomorrow night. Take advantage of it while you can. 20% off anything that's regular price in stock. That does not apply to custom orders, only to order and only to existing inventory. So take advantage of that if you can. And um, that will be good through Sunday at midnight. So um, I did put some new colors in there if you haven't seen my posts yet. So go check them out. Um, and yeah. So I hope everybody's doing well. We had some beautiful weather today. Went to the park uh, with some kid friends and moms and we did um went to the library and played fetch with the dog and did some work so here i am now for you to create a new design so i got a picture from a hello who wanted a shad done and it is a gizzard shad but it is a little different in color than the one that i have done in the past so um it will be a little bit different color wise and we're going to try some new techniques so let's get started so first thing we need to do is put on some stylo res all right so this i already primed this one up this is not a white swim bait it's actually clear but i already put some lacquer on this um because that's just kind of what i do so i'll show you what i do normally so if I was normally going to paint with um, water-based paints, which I don't, uh, we're going to do a Steinel Res base, which is a primer. Um, it is water-based, but it has, um, it's an acrylic polyurethane water-based primer. I'm not sure how that works, so don't ask for details on its composition. But it does stick to the bait. It sticks to the plastic a lot better than just regular paint does. So I think it makes a big difference. So if you want your paint to stick to your bait and you don't want it to all peel off when you're clear coat, uh, maybe get scratched or chipped. I'm sure we've all seen it before. If you, you've had um, baits that were custom painted with water-based paints and once the clear coat go goes, the whole thing kind of peels a little bit. So this will help with that a little bit. So I put a little a bit of that on there, make sure I get everything coated. And then um, we're gonna just do a white base as well. So I have not done this color before, but it's not drastically different than things I've done before. So um, it shouldn't be too crazy, but I had to get this done anyways. So you are my captive audience for, for this assignment I had to complete. I hope you guys are doing well. Make sure you share the feed if you can, please. I appreciate the shares. You can also find me on YouTube. Hi, Billy on YouTube. I um, appreciate subscriptions on YouTube. I don't make any money there, but that's okay. Um, it's just cool to see how many people subscribe. I don't make any money. I has not the editing skills to make money on YouTube or time to learn them. Um, so this is just, um, uh, what is this? This is Wicked Detail Flat Detail White. Opaque flat, <laughs> wicked, detail, opaque flat white or something like that. It might not be in that order, but that's what it is. Anyway, it's a long name. So this stuff sprays pretty nice if you want um, a white that, come, that goes on smooth that doesn't like totally clog your airbrush all the time. 
Hang on, this is gotta gotta press the red button. If you've ever used a hair dryer for airbrushing, you know what I'm talking about. You gotta press the red button. Or it won't work. Okay, so I'm just making sure that that's all dry. So I did a I did a lacquer base coat on this, but I still need a water base coat because uh, water base paints just won't they don't lay down very nice unless you have a base coat. So you always need a base coat unless you're doing a transparent pattern. Then I recommend doing um, a transparent base coat. Transparent base is an actual color by Createx. It is called transparent base. And uh, so if you don't have that, that's a must have color. You need, it helps to um, if you want if you want to make your paints more transparent, you can mix it with your colors. Um, and you can also use it as a base coat or a barrier coat, like if you want to seal something before you put more paint on top. So colors don't bleed together. You can use it that way too. just put a coat of your transparent base over top of whatever you're um, painting over and it'll help prevent uh, running or whatever. So. OK, um, hi, Dad. I'm sorry you're burnt. You need to get some sunscreen. All right. We're just um, doing a little heat set here. Make sure you share the feed if you can. I'm going to go ahead and post the, the discount code here at the bottom and the website to order if you want to. That's not it. I forgot that I copied something else. <laughs> I always screw something up. It just wouldn't be a day if I didn't make a technical error during my show. So I'm gonna be the website. I'm gonna post it here along with the link to YouTube, my YouTube channel, if you wanna watch there. And also um, the link to my website and the, the discount code, if I didn't say that four times already. <laughs> So, uh, there we go. That should work. All right. And then I'll pin that for you. And so it'll show up at the bottom of the comments if you're curious where to order. And um, the code. Okay. So, all done with that. So, let me make sure that this base coat is really dry. And then we're going to wrap this up in a little bit of uh, mesh, maybe, I'm thinking. First, I'm going to have to do some black along the high sides. So this is like a gizzard shad with kind of a golden top. Um, they vary in color where it depending where you are and stuff like that. So this was just a reference photo that was sent to me um, from somebody in Oklahoma. Um, and so apparently this is what the gizzard shed look, look like where this person fishes a lot. So all I'm doing is going across the high side with some black and that's just going to, that's going to be for the scale pattern on top. Nothing exciting. Pretty standard stuff. It's spring break for us here. So I have... I have these children 24-7 for the next, I don't know, 4 million days. So I get to listen to them fight for the next 8 days straight. I'm sure some of you can relate to the joy of that. Spring break, is, it's a good break for the kids. It is more work for mom. Okay, so um, I don't know if I'm going to leave this in here. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to clean it out. I'm going to clean this out and then we're going to do I'm kind of, I'm thinking right now because I'm, I'm thinking about how I want to do this. I grabbed a mesh, a mesh scale here and it's sitting um, on my desk, but I'm thinking it's too big of a mesh scale and I might use something smaller. I might hate myself for it because it's really hard to wrap. I might, I might try pinching. I think I can fit this in between two. I'm going to try and fit this in between two um, cross stitch loops. I think it fits. 
I checked it before the show and I think it fits. So I was going to wrap it in this, but the way that this shad looks, it has really small scales. And I think this is a little bit too big. Um, this is a textured bait, unfortunately. I don't like it when they put scales on them unless I'm going to do um, like a antique it and put, you know, black on and wipe it off. I don't think that that would have looked very good with this. I don't know. It just wouldn't look good with this pattern the way that the picture looks. So I'm not going to do that. I'm trying going to try and work with the pattern with the scale still intact and I'm not mess with that too much. So the, the hard thing about um, baits with texture on them, I wish they all came smooth because it's so much easier to get your paint job to look fantastic when there's not a bunch of texture on these, like all the scales and stuff that are permanent makes the paint not look as good. Um, or it makes it more difficult to make the paint look good is, is what I should say. Um, I'd rather paint the scales on myself than have a texture do it for me. Much prefer the look of a smooth face. So like you're, I don't know. If you're going to do like a, a really plain paint job, then it's fine, you know, for the scales to already be on there. But if you want to do a really nice paint job, it's just there's nothing like a smooth finish to help you make it look really good. Okay, so um, I'm going to do it this way. So this does fit barely. I think this bait is seven inches total, and this is a six inch hoop, I think. So it barely fits in there because it's seven inches at the tail. This is a brush tail. I'll show you what it looks like at the end, okay? It's just like a normal brush tail, just like the one I did last week is what it looks like, kind of. Okay, I'm going to do some gold on the um, over the black here. So this is Createx Pearl Gold. And then we're going to do, um, yeah, we're going to try some... We're going to try some techniques to get the lateral line that I haven't really used before. Um, actually, you know what? I, one of the things I was going to try, I didn't bring in here, but I haven't tried it yet anyways, so I'm going to put that off. And I had a couple ideas on how to do this. So one of the problems with lateral lines is if you want it to look realistic, it has to have the scale kind of the scale pattern integrated into it. And so you want it to be broken up a little bit, but not necessarily like exactly like the scales. Does that make any sense? So I'm going to do something kind of different. I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. I can always fix it if it looks like crapola. Hello, guys. Make sure you share the feed if you can. I appreciate the shares. I know it's nice out everywhere, everywhere so everybody's probably outside today. But I know lots of people will watch the replay. Make sure you share the feed. Check out the new stuff on my website. I have lots of hand-tied jigs as well, you guys. I don't know if you've known. Um, I started wire tying my jigs. So I have a lot of really nice jig patterns um, on my website. You get 20% 20, 20 off if you use the code LIVE20. That's good for tonight and tomorrow. Um, so check out some of those. Get stocked up for summer, spring. But everybody said they had to have wire tied. So I learned how to wire tie. And they look good. So... Check them out. If you're local and you like to go to Kathmandu and buy, Kathmandu is a general store that's down the street from where I live. I live right by the lake. Um, there, I just restocked them today. I don't know if they're on the shelf yet, but if, if that's where you like, to, if you like to just go in and look and pick up, they have a bunch of new stuff. And if you're ever there and you're local and you see something that you like, but it's not in the right lure or you want more, just uh, get a hold of me. You know how to find me right here. Shoot me a private message. My email is coloradolures at gmail.com if you need to talk to me on email instead. I'm working on a really sweet craw pattern right now. I'm excited. I came up with it today, this morning. I was messing around and I came up, I came across some pictures of a, a really cool um, craw, and so I came up with a new pattern. And it is sweet. Excited. 
Thank you for the stars, Matt. I appreciate it. Very nice of you. I don't even know what my star balance is. I always forget that I have the star balance. I've never used I've never used the, the money from my stars before. I think Facebook just wants you to use it on advertising. <laughs> I don't pay for advertising usually. I have before and it doesn't really I don't see any results. This is the best way to get people's interest is just to do some live painting and um, just post my stuff on Instagram or you can buy my stuff on auction too. Um, I do a lot of auctions on bass um, fishing flea markets on the weekends. Just to reach some of the people who don't uh, like to use my website for whatever reason or don't know about it. So again, I'm just going across the top basically with gold creating a scale pattern and I'm about done there. So um, now I'm going to do some white, white, like white pearl on the whole body of the lure. So let me clean this gold out. There's not much left in there. And then I'll put some Tester's Aztec white pearl, which is the prettiest there is. Um, I might go back over it with a white mica, mica powder too, just to see if I can get more reflection out of it. Um, Gosh, there's one guy I know who gets the best reflection off of his lures, and I, I have no idea how he does it. Some people keep really good secrets in this community. They all get out eventually. But I understand. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little reducer on this because this stuff does have a tendency to dry a little bit fast. So... I'm going to thin it just a smidge, not too much, but I'm hoping it'll keep it from drying in my airbrush. So what else is up, everybody? Anybody going fishing tomorrow? It's supposed to be 70 here. It didn't pin. Okay, let me pin it. I didn't pin it. That's why. There you go. It's pinned. Thanks for letting me know, everybody. How are my YouTube folks doing are y'all with me still okay so this can be kind of it can be kind of hard to tell how much you're spraying when you're going through mesh with white pearl so you know just do a little bit at a time and then give it a quick dry you don't want to get this too hot because it'll start to stick to your lure if you get it too hot and then you'll pull when you pull off the mesh you'll pull like some paint with it so don't go too heavy with the paint and don't pull it off. Don't dry it too hot. Otherwise, like, do you know what I'm saying? This like mesh will stick to your bait. And when you pull it off, it'll pull paint off with it. So light coats and then it, like dry it, but not too hot. Otherwise it kind of bakes the mesh onto your bait. And then, yeah, you have a whole other set of issues that you have to fix. So Did anybody get one of the GFB glides? Did you get any, anybody get one? He did had a drop. He did um, a quick drop this afternoon. I've been painting a lot of um, his glide baits. And uh, he uh, released a batch this afternoon. They are fantastic. I don't have, oh, I do have one. Oh, I can't show you this. I can't show you this one yet. I did a carp on one of his baits. And um, I have to clear coat it. And then I'm going to post pictures. It turned out pretty sweet. I like it. I was um, trying to finish up this glide bait and then a couple others I was working on. These are pretty nice, actually. If you haven't tried these, they're from Alternative Lures. They're a 7-inch. Um, I think it's like 2 ounce, 2.2 ounce or something. I'll weigh it so you guys can know. But, um, yeah, it's just nicely weighted. And it feels, like, really good and solid. I haven't um, swam. I haven't swim tested them, but um, yet. But they seem nice in my hand anyway. Okay, we're gonna do a lateral line now. 
before I wear everybody out with my chattiness. Um, so I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a stencil. Um, they were all gone before you got the chance, Daryl. I'm sorry. They don't go that fast, but you know, as time he does a drop like every week or two, and um, in time, most people will have one already, and they'll be a little easier to get. We'd like to think that, but that might not really be the case. I'm just trying to stay hopeful for you. They're super nice. I can see why they sell out fast. All right, so I'm going to create um, a lateral line stencil here with some. I have one already, but it's not. I don't. I don't think it's wide enough. I could also freehand this, and I'm debating. Debating. I don't want to do it because um, I'm afraid I'm going to try and hold another piece of mesh on here. So I think I'm going to have too many things going on to trust my ability to freehand it. But if it doesn't look right, then I'll just go back over it with freehand. So I'm just taping two note cards together end to end here. I know this is super ghetto. You could do this with like, a, you could cut this with a Cricut machine or whatever. But uh, I didn't really take the time. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it. The not so easy way, but the faster way. Because I, I don't have a lot of patience to sit down at my computer all the time. Desk jobs never really been my thing. I was in outside sales before I did this, just in case anybody was wondering ever. For like 13 years, I was in outside sales. Kind of sucks the life out of you, though, after a while. The soul out of you. Um, all right. I was just trimming that because there was a little, it was a little uneven. So I'm just making this a little wider. You know, I probably have a stencil that I could have used for this that would have worked fine. Now that I think about it, but we're gonna do this anyway. So um, this will this will be something I can use down the road anyways too. So I'm just gonna finish it. So this is how absolutely ridiculous easy it is to make a midline stencil you don't really have to have anything fancy to do it see now you have a line okay it doesn't have to be perfect either right because nothing none of these are perfect on the fish either okay so uh sweet bobby i'm looking forward to see what you do with it bobby um He's a professional airbrush artist, or at least used to be. So he's going to do some fancy paint jobs on his. Oh, yeah. Nice, DJ. Pre-order, huh? You know, I don't, it's hard. Pre-order, that scares me because, like, it's so much pressure if people pay in advance. Then you like have to get it out on time, otherwise everybody wants to hurt you. Okay, so I'm gonna take another piece of mesh and put it on top of this. And I'm just doing this to try to not make it look exactly the state the same as the um I'm trying to make it not look exactly the same as the rest of the scale pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set down another piece of mesh on top of here, and it's not going to lay down in the same way as the other one. And I'm going to put this, it's kind of hard to match it up because you can't see very well, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay, so I'm going to line it up just under the gold line, and i got to put some, I got to put some black paint in here first so I don't, have to worry about that once I get this lined up. So all I'm doing is lining, it's one piece of mesh over this piece of mesh. It doesn't even have to be facing the same way. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to attempt to line it up. Bear with me because that might, might take me a minute. To get this straight. All right, here we go. 
I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to spray through all these layers. And we'll see what it looks like. When we get this off, we'll see what it, what it looks like. I think it should be pretty good. I think it can be a little bit wider, though, than what I have here. So I'm going to put it back down. It looks good, though. I probably should not screw with it, honestly. It's like famous last words. I probably shouldn't mess with it, right? But here we are. Okay, so I'll show you what it looks like through the mesh. So you can kind of see it now, right? Through the mesh. So you'll see what that looks like. The texture looks like with the mesh on, okay? So let's do the other side now. I've got a, a line on here now that I painted, so I can kind of, it's easier to line up the second side. Because I've actually got a painted line on here now. So I'll just line that up. And I'll try and match it up with That looks pretty good. That's not very dark. So I'm going to do it again. It's just not, not dark enough compared to the other one. It's lighter. Okay, let me try one more time here. That's better. Okay. So now that and that, that's better. Okay. So I'm going to do some gold underneath this line because on the picture that I have, um, there is a little bit of gold underneath the lateral line as well. This particular gizzard shed doesn't have like any blues, but what I'm going to do is on the belly, I'm going to put a little bit of interference glue, um, which is just going to be that flash of blue that you see when you turn it in the light. And um, we'll do that at the end, well, somewhere near the end of I have to make sure I get all the black out of here so it doesn't muddy up my other colors. And then I'm going to put the gold back in there and I'm just going to do a little bit of gold right underneath that lateral one. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, uh, stir stick. There we go. Hello. Yes. People bugging you all the time, like just checking in. And I know like you can get yourself into trouble. Like if something comes up, you know what I'm saying? Like what if something comes up and then people aren't very understanding. Like if something comes up and you have a, you never know what might happen in your life. And, and so things take a little longer than they should they should have and then people start trashing you online and stuff because they didn't get their baits in like a week it's stressful to uh, put your take your payments in advance it's it's smart in a way because I've, I've had so many people order stuff and then they just they make up ex like either make up excuses or they just stop responding to messages and then you're stuck with a custom lure that you painted just for them that probably no one else is ever going to want that they didn't pay for. So it's a double-edged sword, you know. You're either on the hook for it in a certain amount of time or you might just not get paid. So it is what it is. Um... <laughs> Let's 
Sending the crankbait. Okay, sounds good. I'm sorry you're at work, Richard. Okay, so um, I think um, I'm going to take this off now. I'm double, I'm double, triple thinking. But I think I'm going to take this off now. And then we're going to do the rest of it without. So, so far, all right, so I'm going to set these aside. Now, this particular bait in the pictures, it has a little bit of a red. It's got some red texture around the face. So I'm going to have to flip to um, my picture. So I'm not going to be able to see your comments for a few minutes. So hang in there. I'll be back. Okay, I'll show you the picture real quick. So this is what this is the one that we're working off of. Okay. So it has a little bit of like redness around the cheeks and the gill plate, but it's not a very pretty pattern. So it's going to suck. It's going to suck really bad to paint this. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to make it look realistic yet, but I'm going to try. Okay. So I'm going to clear this out. And then we're, we're just going to try and make it look somewhat real. Some of these like colors and stuff on fish are so hard. Okay. So I have some like randomness here. This is just the outside of one of the art tool stencils from, from Awada. And it's just got some like, random curves or whatever so i'm gonna just play around with this and see if i can so like that that right there will be kind of helpful i think so i'm gonna use that i might turn it upside down actually which one did i just have no i forgot what i was doing here hang on it was that one okay so like this No, that doesn't work. That wasn't the one either. Okay, I'm going to put some try candy blood red and we're going to see. I can fix it if it sucks. So we'll see what happens. I'm trying to get all the detail, all the details. This was like all crusty, sorry. This is 4030 Balancing Clear. It um, prevents running with the candy colors and it dilutes them a little bit because candy O2 paint is actually a dye and not a paint. Um, so you need some kind of a base to mix it with. So uh, 4030 Balancing Clear is what's recommended. And so that's what I use. So I'm gonna turn my power down here air power a little bit because this stuff will uh it'll it'll run if you're not careful i didn't want to use red on this because it's too bright like this is too bright and then i have um if you wanted to know ahead of time don't waste your money createx has a transparent deep red it's almost pinkish red so um, don't bother buying that if you're wanting like a dark red because it doesn't look dark red. Don't do that to yourself, okay? So I just have this sitting on the gill plate here. Um, if you're, I don't think that's going to make any difference on YouTube how much you can see if I turn that or not. So I'm just going to kind of use some of these. some of these different curves just to make some random red nest red nest <laughs> it just has a little bit i don't know how to explain it it's like you you've seen it right it's almost like you see the blood underneath the scales a little bit or something it's not bleeding it's just got this weird
redness to it. Um, um, so I'm just using some different edges. I'm going to switch over to this one. I didn't like how that was looking, so I'm going to switch. So I'm just going to go along all the edges here. I'm not spraying much. I'm being really careful that I have my air down and I have this diluted a lot because I don't want it to be too. You can even freehand a little bit of this so that the lines are not sharp. Mess it up a little bit so it doesn't look so neat. Trying to get it realistic, but it's hard. So, a little bit at a time uh, makes it a little easier. If you don't overdo it, <laughs> then you can just kind of build on what you started with. Uh, I'll show you what this looks like when I get like somewhat remotely done, because I can't pick it up right now. I'll lose my. My Eclipse, the trigger sticks sometimes. I don't know if anybody else ever has that problem, but it sticks sometimes. I have to put like this <laughs> shot, like lube stuff on it, but I, I didn't after I cleaned it last time. So, okay, so this has some red, like some red texture around the face now. And then um, I will, I'll be mixing in a little bit of gold and stuff with it so it'll look a little bit less um everywhere i guess i do think that the candy blood red was the right choice as far as colors go for this So I'm going to flip this over and do the other side now. And then by the fin, there's going to be some too. So I'm going to color that in before I clean this out as well. So that the fin has, um, it looks the same way as the gill uh, plate area. Just where the fin attaches to the body, it kind of looks the same way. So I'm just going around um, the areas in the picture where it looks kind of pinkish. Almost like, like veins or something like that. I'm a little stuffy. I had my Everybody in this town has got some crap going around. Okay, that looks pretty good. So this is the other side. Some of that redness. So that looks pretty good. Not the same on both sides, but similar. Okay, and then um, right by the fin, I'm going to do some of that too. So I think I'm just going to do like a whole bunch of texture and just move it around uh, little by little. So like put texture on and then go back over it again with texture again in a different spot until I get like some, a spot that looks messy right by the the start of the fin and then I'll be, I'll be going over some of it with um, like a brown edge color so and then 
then I'll freehand over it just a little bit. So you have like where it attached the fin starts on there. And then I'll do the other side and then um, I'll clean this color out. There's like a, uh, there's like a fin on the belly. I can't remember the names of the fins and where they're at. Um, that has some red, but I don't usually do the, the fins down on the belly because they look kind of funny when you paint them on. I don't, they just look out of place. So I don't bother with those usually. Every time I've seen somebody paint those, I just don't, I don't know. It always seems kind of strange or awkward to me. So I don't bother. Like one fin is enough to fool a bass, right? Let's be honest here. One fin on each side and a tail. It's confusing enough. That ran a little bit. So you won't be able to see it because it's so small, but can you see where that spidered a little bit right there? That's what spidering is. So when it kind of like a splat, right? When you think of what a splat looks like, that's spidering. But I, I mean, I fixed it for the most part, and it's going to be um, mixed with a little brown, so it should be okay. All right, so now I'm going to do, so you see how that lateral line is broken up? The way, that's how I wanted it to look. So it's like not, that's what it looks like in real life. It's kind of like gaily looking. So now I'm going to switch to, um, back to a gold again, and I'm going to do a little shading on the face, and then I'm going to do some brown, and then we're going to do some more black. And then I'll finish it out with a little interference blue on the belly. Because you know how Chad look in the light when you turn them sideways, they have a little bit of a purpley blue coloration to them. You could do purple or blue. Um, I've never mixed them together. Maybe we should do that. Mix blue, the blue and the purple together and see what happens. They have um, some color shift pigments that Pearlex makes, but they're really, um, they're more of like a solid color versus like an interference. Interference is when um, you only see the color in the light if it's tipped a certain direction. And then um, like the other pigments, like do the duo pigments by Pearlex, if you've ever looked them up. They're more of a solid color, like a color shift. And they have their place too. That's just not, that's not quite the right tool. So there's so many cool paints out there. I wish I could just like try and buy all these different like color shift and all these different chameleon paints and stuff, but it's just so expensive. And then I think, well, if I get it and I don't really use it, then I just wasted like $20 on paint. <laughs> This seems clogged and it's not making me. Oh, you know why? Because <laughs> I turn the air down. I forget all the time when I turn the air down. And then I'm like, why isn't my brush spraying? Because mm. you turn the air down to like 10 psi. Okay. This morning I was like, I thought, I, I thought my compressor, actually this afternoon, I thought my compressor was broken. My airbrush was just clogged. I was panicking. I'm like, why would it turn on? I'm like resetting, you know, my um, GFIs and stuff. I'm like, no. It's just not coming out because my airbrush was clogged. I have no idea why it was clogged, but it was clogged. Okay, so I'm going to do some just random shading with gold um, along the gill plate area, like behind the eye kind of. And you have to do a little bit at a time because this stuff loves to run. It's so hard to see it and it loves to run. So Createx Gold 
So you just gotta do a little bit at a time. Otherwise, it'll end up looking really messy. Okay. So I'm just hitting it up under the eye here. The eyeball. Eyeball. Hello. Hello. Oh. Yeah, Sean, um, you might like the Hyper Shed by Swimbait Garage. Would you have any of those? If you want a slimmer profile. He um, he releases periodically, and his are really nice, too. I think they're about the same price as the GFB. Yeah, the GFB shads are they're kind of like fatty shads. They're not uh they're not skinny. I'm just cleaning the gold out of here and then I'm gonna do some brown shading. And I think I'm gonna switch brushes because this one is not I think I got some pigment in it or something, it's not spraying very good, or something got dried in here. Very good. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, some sepia, detail sepia in here, and I'm going to do some brown, some brown shading and texture just to get a more realistic look. This Aztec, Tester's Aztec paint, it's like a film. It dries on the inside of the bowl and like creates like a film, almost like a like a latex paint would, kind of. I wonder if it has like latex or something in it. I should look it up, but I don't really care that much. It's like I'm curious, but I don't care enough to look it up. <laughs> to look it up. Okay, so um, this is sepia. Oh, lost sinister stick. I have a tendency to check things and not pay attention. It's right in front of me. Okay. So again, uh, let me go check my comments here to see if I, I know I'm missing you guys' comments. You're on Table Rock. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Highlight blue and purple. Love them. Yep, they are nice. A hard bite. Hold up. We, you got to go fishing. It's nice here. Tomorrow, maybe, if we, if we feel like taking the kids. But All right, so this has a little bit of a line up on the top of the gill plate. And so I'm going to try and trace that a little bit. Um, it's not very smooth, but I'm going to start with a smooth line, and then I'll rough it up. This is just a curved stencil that I have. Line this up kind of um, along the top, and I'm going to make like a dark line. Not very dark, just a little bit of shading. So I'm mostly spraying on the card, and then the overspray is getting out of the base. Just some definition on the gill plate. This sepia is really light, so I'm probably going to add some black texture after I'm done with it. So hang in there with me. I know this stuff is slow, but this is how it really, this is what it really takes to paint this stuff realistic. You just kind of have to go slow and just kind of 
figure it out as you go. Okay, so I'm going to shade a little brown up here. This stuff is so watered down. It's too watery. I only have like a gallon of this, so I'm not too worried about wasting it. I should have barely put any... <laughs> that came out way too fast. I'm just going to dab it. If you dab it really fast, sometimes you can just get it to come off without, without any problems. It's so hard to see this paint. If you're painting over something that's only like not that different in it, it's so hard to see. If you've even put any paint down, like you can't tell. So you can see how I'm kind of creating um, like a, this goes down, this goes down. And then I'm making like a V here and like a V here. So like down, down, V, V. It's kind of what I'm doing. <laughs> And I'm creating that brown base. And then when I come back through, I'll add some black texture to it to make it look a little more messy even, if that makes any sense. <laughs> and then uh, the eye here um, above the nose, there's almost like a um, the line goes straight towards the nose from the back of the eye. Like that. Whoops. Okay. Like that kind of. So I'm going to spray, it's a really small detail that doesn't really matter, so don't worry about it. And then the whole, the whole nose is dark on this. So, let's do some little tiny like texture spots and brown on the belly, okay? Not many. This has got a few. I'll show you the reference photo again real quick. So those of you who missed it can see what I'm doing. It's gold on top if you can't see the picture very well because I'm holding a screen up to a screen. Okay. So I'm going to put a few um, spots of texture randomly for my stencil on the belly. Just to kind of make it look a little bit murkier, just a few dark spots on the belly. Nothing, nothing big. I still have to shave this other side here, so I don't. Share the feed if you can. Don't forget to check out what's uh, new in stock. I have a couple of new colors I added this week to um, my store. You get 20% off with the code LIVE20 through tomorrow night. That's only off a regular price item. LIVE20, I've got uh, some really nice uh, wire tie jigs. 
in stock. And then also um, some nice crotch plastics. Um, and that's some new colors of Texas. So check it out. Can you get a minute? Share the feed if you can on your page. Like the page if you can, please. Okay, so just um, darkening up the nose here. Staring on my shoulder. Okay, let me dry this off. And then I have to do the thin. Before I switch colors, I have to do the thin. Yes, yeah, so, um, Sean, check out check out Swimbait Garage if you want like a thinner <clears throat> profile. I'm coloring in the eye socket with brown right now. I'm just going like barely. I just just shaded around the the very edge of the outside of the eye socket. It just gives it a little bit of a definition where the eye socket is. Um, and then I'm going to do the thin, and then we're going to switch to black. Or actually, probably interference blue first, and then black. So um, I'm just going to use some of my curved stencils to do this fin. I don't have a specific stencil for this fin, but I can usually just use some curves and do an outline. So I'll just line this up with the fin, and I'll kind of move it around. And then I'm just going to shade it like I always do along the top edge. Just kind of outline it. And then make it a little darker on top versus on bottom. Okay, and then you'll take the same curve stencil and then just lay it on the bottom. And just a very light outline. Kind of move your stencil around as you need to to get it to curve around the actual uh, outline of the fin. Shade a little bit red and then onto the higher side of the fin. Kind of like that. So that looks pretty good. Okay. Flip it over and I'll do the other side. And then I may add a little bit of black to the fin as well, um, just on the outside edge. But I'll do that when I get to it, when I start to use the black. Sometimes you got to make sure your stencil's dry if you're going to flip it over and make sure it's dry before you flip it over and use it so you don't get uh, paint stuck to your base like paint that's stuck to your stencil that ends up stuck to your bait because you just put a wet stencil on your it's always a bummer no bueno I'm just trying to get them even here as much as I can. This one is not. It needs just a smidge more outline here on the bottom. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so here's where we're at now. Okay. What do you think? 
Pretty realistic yet? Close? Maybe? You think? No more brown for now. Let's go. We're going to do some interference blue next. I'm just going to mist it over the, the belly, the part of the belly that's white. I have to grab my, it's right behind the camera, so hang on. Okay. So there's my pigment, and then I have some transparent base, which I'm almost out of. Yikes! Next time I order from Spray Gunner, I will have to remember to order that, and then I, uh, yeah. Definitely need to get some more of this. So... Just a few drops of that, and then I'll take my paintbrush and I will dip it in my interference blue. Get a little scoop with my paintbrush. It doesn't need to be a whole lot, you know. Together. Now you can thin this too if you want to with some. Um, I probably, you probably don't have to though. It's not real thick. And I have, I'm using a 0.5 needle. This stuff might be hard to spray with 0.2. I don't know. It's, it's possible you could, but I don't use a 0.2 almost ever. So with these like pearls um, and pigments, you might need at least a 0.3 or something to spray them without having clogging issues. I'm sure there's some people who are successful with a point two, but it's easier if you have something a little bigger. As far as your, that's your, I'm referring to the needle, the needle nozzle combo. My nose is kind of stuffed up. The kids got me a little, a little cold. It wasn't too bad, but I'm a little stuffed. The more pigment you put in the paint, the more you're going to see, you know what I'm saying? But um, if you put that too much in there, then then you don't have to worry about overdoing it. You can just do um, layers until you get it to the level of blue that you want it to be without overdoing it. If you put too much, it'll, it'll be straight blue. like the oyster bait, right? From Strike King. It'll look like that. Use a ton. Except for that's in the clear coat. So it's a little different. They put it right in the clear coat and spray it on that way, which is, I should do that more often. I gotta play around with it though. Maybe, maybe I'll try a shed like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not on the camera. It's kind of hard. Oh gosh, it's really hard to see it on YouTube. Let me try and turn off my light here. That might help a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. I can't, my, my laptop does not show anything as far as that kind of color goes. I don't know if you can see it on the YouTube feed at all or not. But when you do, when you turn it in the light, it is just like ever so slightly blue. One of the crappy things about that is when I post these um, photos on my website and on Facebook, it doesn't also doesn't hardly show up. So when you get it, it's like a, it's a surprise. You got to use a lot for it to show up in pictures sometimes. Even in videos, sometimes it's hard to get it to show up. But in person, you'll see it, especially in the sun. 
think glitter is the same way. Super impossible to get glitter to show up in pictures or in videos. The camera just doesn't. Maybe it's because I have a. I just use a phone camera. The lenses are probably not like advanced enough to capture that kind of a. Whatever you want to call it, reflection or something. Anyway. You can see the white scales on this that I, when I wrapped it, you can see them. When I'm holding it, you can see them. But you might not be able to see it on the camera. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna compare these and see if it's, it's pretty close. I'm gonna get this one more spray okay. I'm just gonna set it down I'm gonna clean this out all right we're gonna put black in here we're gonna finish this sometimes these don't stay on very good they're probably wore out I need probably need new hoses so share the feed if you can everybody make sure you check out what's in stock I have some New Cross and some new shad that I put in stock that are brand new colors. They look good, really good. So check them out if you get a chance. They're better in person. Yeah, this these pearls like to clog your airbrush. You're not alone out there. They just do. Okay, black. Let's finish this off. All right, let me pop back here and see if anybody has any questions. And then I'm going to go back to my picture because I'm trying to get this one realistic. Good. Thanks. Um, you guys can see it. Awesome. Ooh, 30 foot deep rock. That is not fun. I'm like, I don't know. I get stuck on everything. Our entire um, lake is rocks. <laughs> so it's like, it's like a minefield. Trying to keep your bait is kind of almost like a, you might as well expect to lose it. If you have, if you're fishing deep or anywhere near the bottom, don't expect <laughs> Your bait to survive. Okay, that was still a little wet. All right, now I'm going to do a little bit of texture along these areas where the brown is because there's a bit of a black messiness there going on there. So I'm going to do a little bit there. And then um, we'll do our dot and we'll do the, the sign. And then we'll be done. So I'm just using these jagged edges to make a little bit of a mess of this, essentially. Um, and then I'll be, I'm just mixing the black and brown to give it a natural look. And I'll just do a little bit of random texture um, around this eye area too, because it's just kind of what it looks like. It's a mess, a little bit of a mess of stuff. So that's kind of what I'm doing right there. You can see the black. Just kind of messing it up a little bit. Then I'll do the other side here. In a second, I'm going to do just a little more here. Then I'll do the other side real quick. And 
Um, yeah, nothing else is new. It's spring break. We're not going anywhere though. It's too expensive to go. It's easier. It's so much cheaper to travel when school is in session. You gotta fight the, the crowds. I feel like everybody's like going on spring break these days. It's so busy everywhere. My brother went to Florida uh, to see my parents, and they went to SeaWorld, and they were like, oh my god, the lines, and I was like, oh yeah, uh, it's spring break, and I forgot about that, I guess. I would hate to be like at Disney or, or SeaWorld or something. On spring break, it would be during spring break, it would be kind of torturous. We're just hanging out for spring break. Okay, I'm going to go around the inside of the eye socket with black. I'm not going to cover all the brown. And then I'm going to start, I'm going to start shading so that the, um, Fine on this as well. We're almost done. I think it looks pretty good. I hope you think so. Or at least the person who's buying it thinks so. I don't automatically give up your names unless you want me to when I'm painting your stuff on my show. Some people don't like everybody to know what they're throwing. I'm going to shade just a little bit of the, the fin on the top here with this. Just a tiny bit in black. And then I just went along the top edge of that fin black just to highlight the top of it. I'm not going to touch any of the rest of it with black. And then I'm going to shade the entire spine. And I'm going to do a little bit of texture along the top as well um, just to make it look a little bit uneven and choppy like it is. And then we also need the dot. We'll finish it off with a dot. Okay. So I'm just going to take some of these uneven edges on this and I'm going to go along this spine. Hang on, I got a little tip dry here. When you're doing detail work, you have to wipe the end of the needle a lot when you're using black, especially because it gets dry and then it doesn't like to spray very easily. So I'm just going along the, um, the very top edge right here with this stencil to make it a little choppy. All right. I'm going to, that's what that looks like. Okay right now, and then I'm going to do the other side, and then I'm going to just fill it all in in the middle. What's a good book? Tell me, somebody tell me a good book I need to read or listen to soon. I, was, I picked something out last night, and I don't know if I really want to read it. I just finished American Dirt. And it was long. It was good, but it was very long. And I need something new to read. If any of you are readers, I just read before I fall asleep for a while. Okay, now this side is done. So I kept it mostly up top. I didn't get too crazy with the pattern. And then I'm just going to go along. Make sure you don't hold your bait when you're shading the spine. 
because it'll leave thumb marks. Like if you're holding it like this, you're spraying down, you'll get like a little crescent where your finger is at. So don't do that. Always wear gloves when you're painting. The oil, getting your finger oils on the base will cause a lot of problems. It can cause a lot of problems with clear coat, depending on what you're using. Some, some clear coats, it doesn't create a big problem, but um, it should be better safe than sorry, I guess. Most of these things I'm telling you, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> so I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to save you. Okay, so here is... Here it is now. So let's put on the um, the dot, and then we'll get some eyeballs. So I'm going to use this irre slightly irregular circle slash oval. And we're going to just put a big in right behind the. We're going to put it right there, right there. Okay. I'm going to hold this away from the bait just a little bit, so I'm like not going to touch it, and that'll make it look less sharp, which is more natural than sharp. Sometimes when I'm painting and I'm doing like a um, classical style bait and you want it to look super clean, you know, then you'll get, you want to hold it really close. But if you want it to look fuzzy and less, less perfect, just hold it a little bit of a distance away from the actual bait and you'll get a little more of a, of a fuzzy dot. Okay, now let's get some eyeballs. These got to be gold. I believe this is a, I think it's a 10. Let me check. I'm going to grab my 10 and we'll see. If it's not a 10, it's a 9. And I have a very limited amount of 9 that we won't have as much choice with the 9 not as common of a size so I have um, these are beautiful if you ever want to try these they're kind of expensive but they're not as expensive as customized this is uh, the brand is Gruel Gruel Outdoors I know it's backwards but that's what they're they're from Amazon I don't know if he sells any place but Amazon I've never seen them anywhere else but they're really natural looking and um, there's a bunch of different colors and you can get combo packs if you want to try some different colors. So none of these colors really particularly look like the bait, though. So the other option is just straight gold. So let's try the gold. And then let's try um, one of these that looks similar enough. And you guys can tell me what you like better. I mean, this the uh, the 10's not even right. I think this is an 11, but I don't have 11s, so I don't think. So we'll have to make this work. That's interesting. I didn't know these were 11s. Maybe that's an 11. That would work out if it is. Maybe those 10s are just on the small side for some reason. Yeah, that's what it is. See, because this is a 10 and it doesn't even really fit. So tell me what you think. This one, or this one, I think that the, the regular circle one looks closer to the picture. Otherwise, there's, let me pull this one off. I have this one too. This is um, it's kind of like a brownish gold, but it's got a bigger pupil on it, and it looks really good. Um, but... You guys tell me what you think. Yes, you know, this one is smaller. That doesn't look big enough. Weird. These are all supposed to be tens. And that one's the rural eye. Otherwise, just straight gold. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. No, uh, the airbrush was, that was a Patriot. That was a Badger Patriot. And the other one is a Iwata uh, Eclipse. I haven't used Badger. I haven't used Master airbrushes for years. I started with them and they clog really easy, so I'm done with that. Can't deal. Um, gold. 
yeah, the color shift is it's it's not color shift. It's um, interference and it's really hard to see it on video. So you might not be able to tell it's on the belly. <sighs> I am asking fishermen what book to read. You never know who likes to read. You never know. Anybody else have an opinion on the eyes? Anyone? 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 Goal? Okay. Well, you can comment if you want to about what color you think looks better. One or two. <laughs> In the comments. And I'll, I'll watch for everybody's answers. But thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. And I hope that you catch lots of fish tomorrow if you get to go fishing. I hopefully will get to go to supposed to be 70 today or tomorrow. So maybe I'll test this baby out and see how it swims. So you all have a wonderful night. Um, I will, I will one non gold <laughs> two, two, two. Okay. Got you. All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for the feedback. I hope everybody has a good night and we'll see you next week.